I said it's hard for me to love I really thought that you would be the one Maybe it's hard for me to love Cause you told me you changed but I did not see one What is going on everybody? It's Kayla Beasley here back to check out another video on YouTube It's another cold day in the city of Chicago So I'm back with the sweatshirt I got the hat on still I'm gonna keep this going If I'm freezing I do not do well in the cold My brain shuts down so I cannot do it But uh, this came across my little feed uh, on YouTube earlier today. So this is called 10 Things You Didn't Know About the WWE Royal Rumble. Uh, this should be interesting to check out. I just checked out a What Culture video. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check that one out on my YouTube channel uh, to see my reactions to all that. But they're always putting out some great content. So this should be interesting. The thumbnail to this video that caught my attention was that it said like he was drunk. So this should be interesting. Let's let's see here. Let's see. What are they talking about? It is Royal Rumble time. Unless you're watching this in July, then you've got to wait ages. Just pick your favorite and pretend it's January. It is the best time of the year, though. So yes, do it is. To impress your friends uh -oh. trivia. Because, yeah, here's 10 things you didn't know about the Royal Rumble. Here we go. 10, Vince McMahon thought it was stupid. What? Yep, when right-hand man Pat Patterson pitched the idea of 30 men being thrown over the top rope, Vince McMahon rolled his eyes and thought that sounded awful. During a meeting with NBC head honcho Dick Ebersole, though, McMahon needed an idea to present for a TV special, so told Pat to run with it. Vince was convinced it would be the death knell to all of this and we could move on, but no, Ebersole thought this sounded most fun Raw Rumble was officially greenlit. Now, the main reason Dick liked it was due to the entrance format. He assumed viewers wouldn't change the channel if a new superstar was about to walk to the ring, and damn it, he was right. It didn't take long to get rocking and rolling either because by 1989 it had become its own pay per view, and we know the rest. We've talked about it. Are we surprised that Vincent Kennedy McMahon, you know, didn't buy into this at first? Are we surprised? Come on. If you're a, if you're a fan of WWE, you know there's been several good ideas that have been presented to Vince that he didn't really see at the particular time or even talent. <coughs> Excuse me, that he didn't particularly get behind at the time and it ended up being something uh, great. So I'm not surprised and I'm quite sure you're not either. It's the flipping best and that rhymed. Number nine, the first <laughs> Rumble had 12 entrants. What? Because again, this was a proof of concept. I didn't know that. Figuring things out. This is why while 1988 has long been seen as the official debut, the WWF did try one out on a house show with 12 wrestlers as the one-man gang became the last man standing. There were barely any recognizable names in it either, although the Junkyard Dog did make it to the last two. And do you know what gang got for winning? Nothing. We were literally doing it because we needed something to do. Wow. 48 hours, we tried again, this time with 10 people. No title so shot. Didn't have a clue. Although really, that just sounds to me like Pat Patterson had the last laugh. His original concept was the right call. For Number sure. Eight, there were five other non-pay-per-view rumbles. So we are moving away from non-televised live events now because, yeah, on five occasions, WWE decided to see what mileage they could get out of the rumble and put it on free-to-air programming. Randomly, there was a tag team version on Raw in June 1998, which is a mess as 20 people only had 10 minutes. Then come wow. January 1999, we tried again. This time Look it was a 10-man another 15-person version coming on SmackDown in 2004. There was also a mini six-man rumble back on Raw in 2008. And in 2011, it went all weird as seven humans entered with Jerry Lawler winning to get a world title shot against The Miz. What? It's probably best we don't do this again, and it has been yeah. over a decade. Just save it for the big show. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mean that guy. Right? Hey, what I will say... Um... I'm not really a fan of Battle Royals or any knockoff Royal Rumble. I, I'm not a fan of it. I think that, you know, it's its own show. Uh, that's like, that would be just like if they randomly had an Elimination Chamber match on, on Monday Night Raw. It just doesn't have the same feel to it. I think they could probably do something a little bit better with that than if they did these random Royal Rumbles. Especially when it doesn't have 30 people in it. You know, and there's been years where it's like... How are they going to find 30 people? Because they would only use certain people, you know, on the main roster. You And you see some of these people in Royal Rumble, you forget that they've just been sitting in the back and catering this entire time. So, but no, leave it to the big show. <sighs> well, it's the big show. Down out, down out, down out. I had to. I had to just have my moment. No, but leave it to the big pay-per-view event. And let's not do that on free TV. Make me pay for it. Make me, make me earn it, you know?
He really loves changing its rules. And long may this continue. Nothing makes me happier than the stupid rules WWE. Forward by Daniel Bryan. Wrestling. <laughs> Have fun with it. The best of these is this idea that even if you've been eliminated, you can still throw other people out. Yeah. <laughs> the reason it has become so ridiculous, though, is let's go back to 1996. Vader had been chucked over the top rope and returned to press slam Shawn Michaels to the floor when WWE officials decided, nope. It doesn't count. Sid Justice must have been losing it, however, because back in 1992, Hulk Hogan had done that to him, and no one cared. Which is the same way Finley must have felt in 2008. He got disqualified for using weapons, even though we'd been told that was fair game in the Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? The Macho Man Randy Savage also helped with this, because, of course, in 92, he had accidentally eliminated himself when he leapt over the top rope. I think he just forgot. So it could change tomorrow, but at the moment, you can't do that. But yes would not bet your house on that staying a rule yeah and <clears throat> and the thing is like i really hope this year we don't get any of those shenanigans you know and that that's not the type of stuff that you want to see in a big match those are the type of little screw overs that you say for the free tv and the stuff to keep somebody coming back watch the next episode or whatever although i'm not a fan of them all together i would say that if you were to do pull the little screwy stuff and everything it's never made sense to me that somebody that is eliminated from the match, right? Let me hold up. As a wrestler would say, let me talk to you, okay? Uh, it doesn't make sense to me that you've been eliminated from a match and can somehow get back in there and eliminate somebody else. It should not count. It absolutely should not count. If there are any Survivor fans... Uh, I'm a huge Survivor fan. Maybe one day I'll check out some videos about Survivor here on YouTube. But I'm a huge Survivor fan. When you play a hidden immunity idol, any votes, any votes cast against you do not count. Nobody comes from the back and says, hey, yes, it does. Or, you know, they pull something else out. Ah, yes, it does. Now, there has been a couple seasons where they've had the idol nullifier and stuff like that. But anyways... My point still stands. If you've been eliminated from the Royal Rumble match, get out of here. It doesn't make any sense that you get to come back in the ring and do something. That that does not make any sense to me. I, I have never understood that, but they change the rules all the time. So we'll see, you know, if they pull anything screwy this year with that. Number six, an AEW star has some history. Ever since Jeff Jarrett joined AEW, he has been great. Quite the surprise and a nice reminder always let things uh, play out. Carlton. You never know quite the mini run for Jeff because back in 2019 he was a surprise in the Rumble. And while seemingly just there for a spot of fun, there's actually more to this. Because if we look into the dates, his last Rumble was in 1999 meaning there was a whopping 20 years between appearances. You won't be surprised to hear that is a record, and I don't know who beats that. Two decades? Not gonna happen. Hacksaw Jim Duggan did hold this record for a while as well at 17 years, so yeah. If it does go down, it'll be quite a surprise. Maybe Roman Reigns turns up in 2044. Grandpa Reigns. John Madden was asked to commentate. For whatever reason, really? Vince McMahon decided that the 1994 Royal Rumble needed some extra pizzazz to it, Somebody mentioned that legendary NFL commentator John Madden was between jobs. Bam. They instantly reached out to him, and as I'm sure you can figure out, he said no. John didn't think he'd be able to get the right tone across. Yeah. He didn't watch that much wrestling. According to Bruce Pritchard on his podcast, McMahon really pushed for this. But when no amount of money would do the job, he settled on Ted DiBiase instead. Turned out that was an error. Because very strangely, the million dollar man just couldn't get it together. Meaning when you do break it down, John Madden... <laughs> And the thing is, if if <laughs> if Ted DiBiase was having issues, let me go back just a little frame here. <laughs> if Ted DiBiase was not doing like a good job, right? Take a look over here. Take a look over here. That is probably the fakest smile then. That's definitely a fake smile and he's probably fuming inside. What are you doing? Why aren't you saying what I told you to say? I think... Vince McMahon is one of the, the funniest people that is probably on this earth. And I think he is funny without even trying to be funny. He's just, uh, he's a character. He's a character in himself. He's the original character. And yeah, if he wasn't living up to Vince's expectations, then this look right here is just for the cameras. As soon as those cameras cut off, you already know. You already know. Ever, 
meaning when you do break it down, John Madden would have likely have done a better job. Wow. What a world we are living in. Number four, Mil Maracas refused to be eliminated. Which is amazing, really. That is the whole point of the match. So if you're not going to go over the top rope, you're going to win. Maybe this was Mil Maracas' hope. Either way, the legendary luchador was entered in the 1997 version along with a bunch of Mexican stars as the WWF tried to appeal to a wider audience. I don't think anyone thought someone like Mill would come in and protect their star status, though. <laughs> but he did. It would simply look terrible for him to go back home after failing, which triggered a huge back and forth. And what was the result? Well, Maracas can just go get rid of himself. This is why Mill just climbs to the top rope and throws himself to the outside onto somebody else because we were mucking around with the rules again, and here, this said he was done. Do you want to know the best bit, though? If you do watch it now, Maracas actually climbed through the middle rope before his hurl, so technically, he is still in the thing. Justice for Mill, he was never asked back again. Number three, the two So he's still in the match to this day. Relationship. I remember this. I was but a boy, but I saw it play out in real time. It was super exciting if you were living in the United Kingdom too, because WWE had struck a deal with Channel 4 to air the pay-per-views for free. Wow. I didn't have any money back then, so this ruled. It turned out life didn't agree with this, however, because, man, we could not have picked a worst event to show. Now, if you don't know, the 2000 Rumble is nuts. It's not only does Mae Young get naked for some reason, the violence Gosh. is off the charts. Triple H and Cactus Drack try to kill each other. Chitty Channel 4 execs were not expecting this, so when we got to Backlash, they included a 50-minute delay so they could edit out any similar content. A 50-minute delay? A 50 minute delay that is a long delay when they show stuff on the news where it's like an active car chase or uh you know a really intense hostage situation and for whatever reason they have the cameras like right there there's probably a seven to ten second delay i've done some some various roles in in television at different studios and stuff and there was a seven second delay a 50 minute delay that's ridiculous and you really only have that delay in there. I know they have it at those popular award shows like the Emmys and the Grammys. Just a quick 10 second delay in case somebody cusses one too many times, says something they shouldn't do. They can edit it out. That's why when you hear the bleep on something live, it's way longer than the actual word. They may say, you know, beep, but the beep, beep, because they only had 10 seconds to just throw something together real quick and send it out before your bare eye saw it. And it was just going to be the end of the world because we've never heard any of those words before. Never. Never. What are we going to do if we're watching the Emmys and somebody says something? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What a big deal. But a 50-minute delay. Jeez. That, yeah. <laughs> and they told, I would feel so bad. Imagine you're a kid and you get told, hey, not only are you going to get to watch this pay-per-view, you're going to get to watch it for free. For free. This is bad. This is no network and everything like that. This is for free. So you get to that and now all of a sudden you're getting screwed over. I, I would be so mad. And there's nothing you could do about it either. Last that long, although really, why didn't someone from Channel 4 just watch any episode of Raw? It wouldn't have taken that long to figure it out. Number two, Maven was drunk for his big No moment. way. At the very least. It has stood the test of time as Maven eliminating The Undertaker from the 2002 Royal Rumble is still a talking point today. We should probably chat more about the horrendous chair shots. Man, and then him just standing man. there taking it. It's a different video for a different day. As the Tough Enough winner revealed recently on his very good YouTube channel, though, he walked into this after having a few drinks. Now, this wasn't him being unprofessional or anything like that. And instead, Maven found Taker beforehand so they could walk through it all. The rookie was also desperate to do a good job, so wanted the planned blood to flow freely. When the phenom suggested he took an aspirin to help with that, they hit a snag. Maven was allergic. Uh -oh. The Undertaker knew how to deal with that too, though, so he busted out some whiskey. And while he was able to smash these, clearly it was different for Maven. So, yup, he walked to the ring feeling a little buzzed. Wow. In hindsight, maybe this was for the best, because, yeah, man, those chair shots. Still not over them. Yeah, one, just standing there taking himself. those shots like that, just imagine. Just imagine. I mean, you don't even have to see the clip. Yeah, Let's man, see here. Those chair shots. Still not over. Just standing there. I mean, hands down. And his arms look relaxed. Like, I don't even see him tensed up or anything. He took that. 100% he took that. that that's insane. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I don't know. You know, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know if I could take it as good as him. But, like, 
I don't know, maybe a couple of like a beer or two or something and a couple of my guy friends. I don't know. I don't know. Let me not let me not give anybody any ideas. Twenty years. Don't try that at home. Randy Orton's unwanted record. I doubt Randy Orton cares about this. The man has become one of the biggest stars in modern day WWE, earned a ton of cash, and will go into the Hall of Fame. He has smashed it. If we yeah, do go back sure. to the 2021 Royal Rumble, though, which was won by Edge, you may remember him and Randy were in there for ages. I think the official time was 58 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, That's a long-ass run. That what is. sort of slipped <laughs> under the radar, though, is that Orton eliminated nobody. That's right. It means he is officially the person who has spent the longest time in a rumble without throwing one guy out of there. Wow. And I know there is an asterisk as he was out of the thing for ages after a brawl with the rated R superstar. But still, you can't argue with numbers and you can't argue with maths. Even Edge during this time was only able to hurl out Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman and the Viper himself, which also went great. He does get away with it, mind because it was still better than Randy. If you did enjoy that, please click the video on the screen right now, which is 10 secrets to a guaranteed pop in wrestling, which you usually get if you are a surprise in the Raw Rumble. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Have a good day. Goodbye. Another great video. Another great video by What Culture. Uh, definitely going to go ahead and give that a like. And you should as well. Give them a like. Give them the props that they deserve for putting... Uh, together that video and uh, give them a subscription as well because I definitely learned some stuff I did not know that Maven was drunk uh, when he went to the ring I did not know that at all and I've checked out a couple of videos from Maven uh, Maven it's the Maven Huffman on YouTube if anybody wants to check them out but I've checked out a couple of videos and I do not remember hearing about that story so that is very interesting uh, that's an interesting video there too 10 secrets to a guaranteed pop in wrestling but let me focus let me focus get myself together here thank you so much everybody for checking this out i really appreciate it uh i really appreciate checking out the wwe content with you guys um definitely something i'm always interested in and um yeah so if you are interested uh would love to check out um yeah i'm all over the place with that anyways uh, if you are interested and feel compelled to do so, definitely feel free to give me a subscription uh, or a like on this video. It would be greatly appreciated, and I will see you next time.